Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Tackling Sport Podcast. I'm your host Sean Hussey, joined alongside me as always by my brother Daniel. Daniel, how are you getting on? Well, we were joined by him. I think there might just be a touch of a delay, but How's it going? we'll get back. Oh, there you are. We'll get back to um, the lads. We've got joining us to talk the All Ireland Football Men's Final. We've got John from the J Mac Podcast. John, how are you getting on? Good, Sean. Thanks very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on. Really looking forward to the game. And we're joined by Aaron from GA Fan TV. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Great to great to be on, and I've obviously had Daniel on a couple of times. So uh, yeah, great to be on your show. Brilliant as always. And of course, I suppose we're going to start talking about the semi-finals. And I might go to you, John, first. I mean, it's hard to find what is a bigger story or what was a bigger story. Was it Mayo beating Dublin or was it Kerry? losing to Tyrone and maybe that was being the narrative from it we got to remember all that happened to Tyrone maybe even with the COVID to come and put in a performance I mean it's hard to really remember two more memorable semi-finals certainly in recent times it definitely is Sean it definitely is two absolutely sensational games they really really were they had it all both games went extra time and it just really lit the championship up and I just think what it's just what GEA supporters needed all around the country because realistically we didn't have any league finals we had an only okay league and a lot of um, counties would have got relegated and bits and pieces so it's probably a bang average league campaign for a lot of people but the championship oh look two absolutely thrilling games to be fair if you had to rate uh, both games the Dublin Mayo game I just think that mental block as I was saying to you Aaron a few weeks ago of Mayo get, finally getting the over the line against Dublin it was absolutely tremendous for them but look who would expect it I was listening to Paddy Andy podcast there today Andy was saying who would expect it to roll to come out and perform like that against Kerry the day that was tremendous stuff um, and obviously with a few players having COVID, we thought, I said to you, Aaron, a few weeks ago, and Daniel, a few weeks ago, you know, in, in the second half for extra time, we were going to see Tyrone maybe lagging up, legs are going, it looked far from that, Tyrone were absolutely tremendous, so on merit, both teams deserve to be, it deserve to be in the final, Tyrone and Mayo, they've had the absolutely brilliant seasons, the, the full heartedly deserve it, because they put in tremendous semi-finals, and they've just had a fantastic championship, John. Mm. And I suppose going to you, Aaron, I think it's the recency bias is maybe thinking of how good Tyrone's win is. But I think the, the few week break with everything that's happened with the other semi final with COVID, I think you forget how good Mayo were in that game and particularly how well they finished that game con- compared to the scoreline at half time. Yeah, like I suppose a lot of time has definitely passed, obviously, since that game. Like they've had a four week break leading into this final as, as opposed to Tyrone, who've obviously had the, the two weeks. So. Yeah, like Mayo were brilliant, especially for the, especially defensively anyway. Like, I suppose going forward, they really struggled for 60 odd minutes or so. It really wasn't until Jeremy O'Connor's flick after about 62, 63 minutes that they really started to, to punish Dublin in that game. Like, I mean, I've, I've gone back and watched the game a couple of times. And as a Dublin fan myself, I can't get over how poor Dublin were on the day. Like, they were just so poor. And I still think Mayo were there for the taking. Like, you forget if Davy Byrne clears that ball after 70 minutes, if he gets rid of it, Dublin are probably in the All Ireland final. And fair enough, maybe the narrative with them, with them be Dublin are still vulnerable, blah, blah, blah. But I do still think Mayo were there for the taking. But I suppose you have to say, like, for, for Mayo, like, tremendous amount of heart, spirit, desire to never give it up. And, especially Robert Henley as well. Like, obviously, he missed the the 45 originally. He didn't know about the messing that was going on behind him. So he gets a second opportunity, puts it over the bar. And I suppose Mayo never really looked back. And I think the crowd is a big thing with Mayo as well. Like, I wasn't at the game, but I know Daniel was at the game, and I'm sure he can speak about it in further detail. Like, with the Mayo crowd, the way they got behind that Mayo team and the momentum as well that they, they had really after kicking a couple of points, building a bit of momentum... They couldn't really look back from there and it was um although it's dublin and crow park it was it was mayo who who certainly had the the support of the crowd and you know at, you know from extra time onwards they they were absolutely brilliant and fully deserved of the victory mm. we we might try daniel there now daniel I, I suppose what touching on um what aaron said there about the crowd and, and the sort of the atmosphere around mayo i mean it's hard to it's hard to get away from from that if you're there I'm not sure he is. I think he's having a couple of difficulties. We might we might go to you on, on that, John, and maybe just touch on that point about how good the atmosphere was for that Mayo game and how important it is for them. And maybe even the, the extended break they've had to just let everything calm down for the moment. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And look, we we know how, you know, much football means to the Mayo supporters and you know, I think 
not having fans at games has really been a disadvantage to a lot of counties because we've seen in the All Ireland final last year, you want fans in the All Ireland final. There was no fans for obviously the Dublin Mayo game and the Hurl final. You know, sport is not without fans. It, it was just, it's, it's it's tremendous to see them back. And they really probably did help Mayo in that game because they really just sport them on. They needed, they needed it as a 16 man, especially in that semi final, kind of championship, then big game. So it, it was brilliant for them. Um, we're supposed to guard the break now. Obviously, both counties did get their media days out of the way very quickly, as I was saying to you, Daniel, a couple of days ago. It was very cute management or cute management skills by uh, Fair Global, Brian Dewar, James Horan. Just got all the media out of the way, fully focused for Saturday. And I can't blame them because there's so much noise that goes on uh, leading up to the final tickets, everything, the media, the, the noise going around it, John. So, uh, very, both counties, you'd have to say, are very well prepared going into this game, Sean. And we've got a couple of comments in. Make sure to get your comments in and to check us out across all social media platforms. This is from someone who says, I reckon Mayo will clinch it. I'll be on to caution and, and, and thrilling enthralling affair and i think that's what a lot of people are going for and then another one here from matthew tyrone for him so make sure to get your comments in daniel i suppose i'm going to go to you again on that point about the fans and you were obviously someone who was at the game the dublin semi-final does seem like quite a while ago but when mayo get up and we've seen it in in the past when mayo get on a run in crow park i mean they can be really deadly yeah and it's a it's been said a lot now across all the like media outlets and stuff like that but it's important to reiterate like i haven't come across a set of supporters and um, when they take on the dubs that out ima like imagine not only to compete with the dubs but exceed it and that comeback would not have happened uh, a couple of weeks ago four weeks ago now if it wasn't for the mayo supporters absolutely incredible the way they and they kind of fill all the pockets of the stadium and even though it was restricted attendance and it will be again on on saturday they just bring different that bit of madness to the game and it Kind of like it, it's almost like something as small as yeah, a, a ball gets dropped by. I, I remember Stephen Cluxon hitting a ball over the sideline a couple of years back, and the place erupted like Mayo just won the All Ireland. It was absolutely ridiculous, like to be honest with you. But I don't think you can underestimate the impact those supporters have, particularly in Crow Park, uh, on an All Ireland final or All Ireland semi final day. And in fairness, now Tyrone supporters aren't a million miles away. They have that bit of they bring a different sort of madness to them. Uh, in you know they're very vocal in the stands. If you're if you're sitting beside a Tyrone supporter, you. You'd be having a little um, spat with them throughout the game, let's say it. But uh, they're a bit more vocal in other ways. But I'm really looking forward to that atmosphere. And while it's only 40,000, we talk about it on the podcast all the time, Sean. Sports definitely back now. Like there's crowds at games. It's the All Iron semi-finals were, I, I don't know how to describe what, what actually happened in those games, but they were just brilliant uh, endings and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to a close game on Saturday. Mm, and, Aaron, and Aaron, I'll go to you on that as well. I mean, the thing, what Daniel mentioned there about Mayo in the past in, in Crow Park, and maybe, as he mentioned, the four weeks since that All-Ireland semi-final, just that extra time, John alluded to the fact they've got the media stuff out, everything's calmed down. And you've got to remember the one thing about Mayo, what they don't lack is All-Ireland experience. Now, they might have moved on a few players, but there is still a bulk of guys there who've been on the road. Like you mentioned, Rob Henley earlier, guys who've been on this journey for four or five years at least. So... They, they will be fancying their chances and that I think what people might think is that they might manage it well um, and manage it a lot better than they have in the past. Would you agree with that kind of sentiment? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Like I suppose they, certainly from watching Mayo, obviously since James Horn in particular has come back in, like they definitely don't seem to have that same stigma maybe that was attached to it. Mayo maybe under Stephen Rochford or, you know, Pat Holmes and Noel Canelli. Like you would have to, Although, like, Mayo probably came closer to winning an All-Ireland in those years, like, you would have to wonder why were Mayo getting beat in, you know, in, in the Connacht Championship? Like, why weren't they coming through Connacht when, God, we weren't at their best and they were struggling to get through qualifiers? Whereas now, in particular, since James Horan's come back in, like, he's he's really taken every game seriously. Like, you think back, they won the league in, in 2019, which I think has stood to them brilliantly. They've obviously won back-to-back -back Connacht titles. They've now got the back-to-back All-Ireland finals. And certainly with the young players that have come into the side, the likes of Tommy Conroy, Ryan O'Donoghue, Ushin Mullen as well, like they don't seem to have that same fear maybe. And, and not necessarily to say that Mayo had fear in those other All-Ireland finals, but maybe when things were going wrong against Dubs, like in particular in 2019, the, you know, a lot of those players maybe could have thought, oh, here we go again, we're up against Dublin, they're you know six, seven points ahead, how are we going to turn this around? Whereas this Mayo side certainly don't seem to have that same stigma or fear and especially going up against Tyrone, a team that may have beaten in 2016, 2013 as well. 
fair enough Tyrone beat them in that league meeting last year just after the lockdown but I don't think Mayo will have any fear whatsoever going into this Tyrone game and certainly you know they'll go in feeling like they've a huge huge opportunity like they will come on come into this with a lot of pressure there's no doubt about it they've gone and beaten Dublin like they've done the hard part now they have to back it up and, and win in All-Ireland but I do think like with the young lads that are coming through for Mayo, like they're going to be a proposition year in, year out. And like, I do feel like it is only a matter of time, surely, before they eventually do get over the line, whether it'll be this year or next year, I suppose we'll have to wait and see. Mm, and I'm going to go to you, John, and just touching on this point you got from Liam here. Mayo need a better first half than they, they did against Galway and Dublin. If Mayo can do that, not concede a goal, their fitness will win the game. And he also mentions the fact that Oshie Mullen is, is, is lined up to come back and then there's another one here Tyrone have the edge Mayo will beat them themselves so it's conflicting views but the one thing I was going to say on that is if Tyrone are not the kind of team that you want to go a couple of goals down to historically now they have changed a little bit the the, the management team this year away sort of from Mickey Hart's strategy but you can imagine if Tyrone get a couple of early goals I mean it's going to be very difficult for Mayo who are so renowned for their comebacks that it might just be one step too far would you do you kind of agree with that or, or do you feel like Mayo are just so well rounded at the moment they can deal with most things well it's so hard to know like I think goals are an absolutely huge thing in finals uh, Sean and look we've seen Mayo Dublin in recent years in finals Dublin have got the goals and have really took the life out of Mayo in recent years so I really do think Tyrone if they do open up we've seen against Kerry they got three good goals like Colin McShane Darren McCurry Matty Donnelly Conor McKenna they are lads that could cut through and get goals. So honestly, it's a huge thing in the final. And we've, we've seen it. And I think I've seen a great clip back in 2012, Michael Murphy's goal against Mayo. What, five minutes in, pumped the big ball in, bang, goal. Momentum was at Tony Gall. So don't, Tyrone have all the aces in the pack to get the goals this, uh, this weekend. So it could be a huge, huge factor. Um, and it's something we could really see. Like if Conor McKenna can kind of nip in and around the, around the box again, like he done, like we were saying, he actually didn't do a whole pole pipe for that game. But the man got his um, name the goal score sheet twice. So he was absolutely brilliant for them two goals. So it, it could really happen. It could knock the stuff out of Mayo. But look, Mayo, they're battle hard at this stage. As you were saying, they had that month break. Look, the what-ifs of all the games. They definitely prepare for all the what-ifs for this game. Goals is going to be huge. Surely they'll be they'll be well aware of Tyrone's tread up front. I don't know, as you say, if Tyrone do get, out, get in early, get a goal or two, it, it could be a massive momentum switch. All Ireland final, big occasion. So we'll just have to wait and see. But surely James Horan, he's seen enough at this stage. So it, it will be very interesting to see. But if it was going to come from Tyrone, the goal this weekend, Conor, Mr. Conor McKenna, Darren McCurry could definitely be uh, candidates for that, Sean. Yeah, and I think what, what's really interesting, we just got another comment in. Make sure to get your comments in on Periscope or YouTube or Facebook Live. This one from James Sweeney. Tyrone will struggle to get three goals again. They'll have to hit everything to win. And that maybe is an element that... I'm not saying they got lucky against Kerry, but when it came, they were very clinical, and that was the difference between the two sides. What I'm going to ask you about, Dan, is maybe for all of Mayo's strength, is there a little bit of touch of vulnerability there, potentially, if they get opened up and, and get exposed? I mean, we saw last year in the All-Ireland final, James McCarthy had a goal after 12 seconds, I think it was. Is there is there a danger that Tyrone can just be a little bit too cute? And John mentioned some of the attacking threat they have. I mean, you, you can't afford to to give McKenna or these guys a chance. Yeah, and on the Mayo side of things, I definitely feel that against Dublin, they were trying so hard not to concede a goal that they would almost give Dublin a point. Now, it somehow ended up working for a variety of reasons, mainly because of Dublin's lack of thinking the game was over sort of thing. But they did seem to kind of back off. Def uh, and it'd be interesting now, do they really go for those you know one-on-one -on -one battles or do they back off and give a point? Because as a defender, you can really stop a goal by just backing off two or three yards and giving Tyrone the score. On the Tyrone side of things, they like likes of Conor McKenna, like because he, you know, he did nothing in the game really until he scored the goal and then kind of went in and out of the game and then the other goal. Like so he's always kind of there thereabouts as a goal uh, poacher. But like I'd be very interested with Colin McShane. And speaking to that at the start of the week, I was, you know, certain he would start. And like I, I'm certain he won't be named on the initial 15, but I was certain that 30 minutes before Tyrone when the team sheets are in, he'll be number 26 starting. But on reflection, there's a lot of people saying that they want to keep him in reserve. And it, it's, it's a difficult one because I've, and Sean, you know, I'm a big advocate. Of, you've got to leave something and then up your sleeve when things go wrong. And to a certain point, Colin McShane is that player. But I just think the presence of him 
you, you talked about, uh, John talked about the high ball going in, like Michael Murphy, like who better man than Colin McShane, AFL player, to catch a ball on the edge of the square and score a goal. And I appreciate his movement isn't what it, what it has been because he's coming back from injury, but I personally would start him. But then you've also got the Dar- Dar- Canavan, uh conundrum, whether you start him or not. So Tyrone have options and they do have a, a strong bench, particularly in the forward line. It, it's really the winning and losing the game will come down to what uh, Dewar and Logan start with in that four full forward line and whether they go with McKenna or whether they go with uh, McShane. And it, I'm struggling if Colin McShane comes in, who comes out? That's probably why maybe on reflection, he might possibly leave him in reserve. But I know, I think Aaron said to me a few days ago that maybe they might do a Peter Canavan on it and just, uh, you know, to start him for 20 minutes, take him off and then bring him back on then to win the game for them. But uh, it's a fascinating battle. But on the male side of things, they, to stop the goals, they might kind of back off those to own forwards a little bit more like they did against Dublin. But that's high risk in itself because they gave you know Dublin a, what should have been an insaleable lead. Yeah, here we go. We've got some more comments in this from the Sideline podcast just saying, do we see Oshie Mullen start? Now, again, that could well be a conundrum with the likes of Colin McShane as well. Here's a point that I want to touch on as well because I think this is quite an interesting dynamic to some begs. 85, if Tyrone improve on their passing in general and sort out their kickouts, he thinks Tyrone might win by three or four. Now, Aaron, I'm going to ask you about this. What what side are going to come out on top in the kick-out debate? You've got Niall Morgan in goal for Tyrone and Rob Hendy, who kind of came out of the, the darkness, if you like, and came out of a lot of gloom and negativity around maybe some of the things he's done in his career to produce one of the all-time legendary Mayo moments, certainly up there with Kieran McDonald. So where what, where would you rank the two of them if you were to, if you were to maybe pick one in the morning? Yeah, I suppose it is an interesting one. I suppose if you're asking me right now, I'd have to go with Niall Morgan. I think he's been the more consistent for me for the majority of the year. I think his kickouts have been spot on. Um, his distribution's been perfect. Um, even when he's even seen Rory Began, for example, when he was you know looking to kick into pockets of space, and he's seen Niall Morgan drifting into the empty space and then forcing Rory Began to kick out over on the sideline. So I think like with Robert Henley, it's it is an interesting one. And you said there about recency bias earlier about Tyrone, obviously beating Kerry recently, more recently than Mayo, but. Like I've gone back and watched that game a couple of times, and even in the first half, I actually think Robert Henley struggled uh, at different stages with his kickouts. Like there was a few kickouts that were going to Dublin players, there was a few that were going out over on the sideline, and even go back and look at the league. If you if you remember the Clare game, he dropped the ball at one stage, and when the Clare lads put it into the back of the net um, against Galway, he was a little bit vulnerable under a high ball as well. So. And even that 45 as well, like late on in the game, fair enough, he did score it, but you do remember that he didn't miss the first one. So I think Noah Morgan's been more consistent for me. I still think Robert Henley's a a top-class goalkeeper, and I think the amount of confidence that will give him that score going into this final, and even in extra time, he was perfect. Like After that score, he really, really did step it up from there. So I think Noah Morgan's been the more consistent for me. Um, But saying that, Mayo do press quite a lot on, on kickouts, and you know, no Morgan done a great job against Kerry, but I suppose we'll we'll see how he does now against Mayo. Yeah, I I had to have that written down, John. I'm gonna ask you. I just have Mayo press because they are one of the teams that is just renowned for eating up goal goalkeepers. I mean, Dan mentioned there Stephen Cluxton kicking a couple of times out, quite notably out over the sideline. Evan Comfort lost a couple maybe towards the end when the Mayo press did come on. Is that going to be a challenge for Tyrone with Niall Morgan? And, and is he going to have to play a big role if Tyrone are going to get hold of primary possession? Because if there's one area where Mayo have vastly improved on in the last maybe year or, or season or two is in their midfield. Well, regardless of all that, Sean, I really think Niall Morgan's going to have to have a huge game in this game because, like, you know, we've seen in the Ulster final, he was drifting out and he was kind of playing that elusive sort of role. He was doing a bit against Kerry. I was watching him very closely against Kerry and he actually was coming out, but he had to drift back to back to his net because none of that ball was really coming out towards him. So he, like, he was kind of wasted against Kerry. I don't really, he just went up the pitch, but he wasn't really getting involved. I just think for the final, he'll be more wary of all that and he'll not be doing much of that, but he'll have a massive say. He, his kickouts will be very interesting to see this weekend. As you were saying, Mayo really do suffocate that area. They'll be doing it again this weekend. The likes of Aidan O'Shea pushing up, Tommy Conroy, Ryan O'Donoghue and Jeremy Connor and the likes. So it will be very interesting, but I just think regardless of all that, Morgan will have a huge say because taken away from all that, his freeze um like dead ball situations in a final we've seen so many numerous times dean rock stepping up niall morgan could have a huge bearing on this game this weekend we've seen him against Kerry in the semi-final he kicked as an outrageous point from the halfway line i still don't know i'm still trying to 
get an idea of how we even manage that still outrageous stuff but uh, I take it aside from it all he'll have a huge game this weekend because there's so more so many more factors to take into consideration every point's going to count this weekend and Niall Morg is going to be kicking a lot of them Sean mm, Dan I'm going to ask you we've got a comment in here and a couple kind of linking to it again from Beg from Beg's 85 cent rounds bench is vital James, his legs were gone in that extra time, and maybe if Clifford was on the pitch, it's a different game. So, because of the gap Mayo had, does that give them an extra advantage if this game does go the full distance and does, you know, maybe become a scrap towards the last few minutes? Mm, potentially, like I think the four week break helps them more in the sense of the emotional, um, of the emotion of that win, and even watching back the scenes this week, you, you nearly forget how much they celebrated not like we were there in hill 16 watching mayo fans celebrate and it, it was it was on the players as well so that four week break you know helps mayo in that sense i also thought it was interesting looking at the stats during the week that mayo have used 23 players against the dubs which is unheard of really going back in those big dublin games in the past mayo never never really had a bench to call upon and that's huge credit to james james horn for the fact that he's used those league games and whatever amount of games he's had, albeit the last two years have been knockout championship, he's managed to assemble a squad and suddenly Mayo do have an impact on the bench. Now, I accept that while Mayo may have more players to come on off the bench, I do think Tyrone's ultimately is probably a little bit more um, effective given the like if you're starting like McShane or Canavan on the bench, like we mentioned at the top of the show. So on the Mayo side of things, at least they have players to call upon here now. And the fact that they took off Aiden O'Shea after 43 minutes and they still managed to win the game, it's just a shine to every single player. If you're a big-name player out there like Lee Keegan, you're going, I need to play well because after 43 minutes, I'll be hauled off here sort of thing. And given that Oshin Mullen will probably be back in and that gives them an extra outlet off the bench, whoever comes on off for him, or even if Oshin Mullen is on the bench, just means Mayo have that little bit more option. So I, I would say that the four-week side of things, it does give them a chance to not only recover from the emotional high, get the players back in, but full credit to James Horn because he's built this squad that Mayo have had. And you consider the amount of retirements they've had over the last few years to like six or seven retirements. And yet they they use 23 players against the Dubs and they'll probably use the full 20, 21 on or 20 on Saturday. So that four week break will, will definitely help Mayo. But at the same time, I think Tyrone, there's no issue with the two week break either because they're just on a crest of a wave at the moment. Dan, if Oshie Mullen starts, did Mayo win? <sighs> Because because I I like I don't want to spoil my prediction, but I on both the I podcast there lads I tipped up Tyrone after extra time you know draw just about Tyrone, and then I you know it's all one tweet I see Oshin Mullen I say Oshin Mullen he's back in he could be the difference he genuinely could be now it it'll be so interesting on the matchups John like whether if Colin Shane starts does Oshin Mullen go on him does Porco Hora go on McCurry or where where do you move it around because there's so many ways you can go that who's Lee Keegan going to pick up so a lot will depend on the matchups like I'd love to make a call in the match publicly you know maybe two minutes after the match starts and then you know go with that but unfortunately these podcasts have to be recorded way before to let everyone listen to them and then judge me after but he could be he could be the difference that's all that's all I'll say what you think yourself it's it's hard to know. Like I think he'd be an absolutely serious addition. And there was talk about oh McLaughlin potentially being fit, but that would just be madness because that's a twelve week layoff for him really. So I can't see him being fit. But I really do think if Oshie Mullen is fit for this game, and you know like Mayo will need all the help they can get this Saturday, I think he's a huge addition, a huge addition, and he's nearly worth a point or two to Mayo. I just feel, you know. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, Aaron, I, I'm going to ask you, because um, we, we have a comment in here, and I, I think he's one of the key players, and Dan mentioned how he came off. What do we think the, the teams are going to be in the matchups? We, we might get into that in a little bit later, but Liam's mentioned if Aidan O'Shea is to start, he thinks he has to be at 9 or 11, can't, can't play him at 14 again. Mm -hmm. And one of my big memories from that game is when Aidan O'Shea catches a mark and he's seven or eight yards really to in front of goal it just seems like all he has to do is he could almost fist it over throw it over and he puts it <laughs> wide so all of a sudden you're thinking i mean if you're going to play this game and and target aid no it's just finding that balance and god it, it seems like it's been plaguing his whole career um but do you think the management of aid no who is you know mayo's tallies man he's their, their captain uh, this year he, he really is firing um but that performance against Dublin does leave a few question marks. And I said it to Dan when he came off in the game. That's actually, he's a victim of the system there. It's just not working for them. 
where what role do you see Aiden O'Shea playing and, and can he deliver a, a kind of a marquee all Ireland performance that we've had in the past from you know your Fenton's or your your Cullum Coopers or your Donahue's can Aiden O'Shea be the difference for Mayo? Yeah, it's it's hard to say that because um, unfortunately he hasn't really done it in, in all Ireland finals really up until this point. And I think playing him at fourteen would be a big mistake in, in my opinion because I think like there was all this talk, you know, against Sligo and Leitrim. Oh, Aidan O'Shea is going to fill in for Killian O'Connor. He's going to play that Killian O'Connor role. Like he's not that type of player. Like he's not a player who's going to score one eight or two seven or anything like that. Like he's not that type of player. And when he's going up against the the big sides, we've seen, you know, if, if Mayo are floating long balls into Aidan O'Shea, is there a trying to do at different stages at the start of the second half like it's just it's a tactic that a lot of teams are, are very well prepared for they know what they're going to do they know that they're going to flow long balls into Aiden O'Shea and it probably most likely won't work um and I think probably the best role really is to either play him at 11 or, or even put him in around midfield like maybe name him at 11 and, and then give him a free roll because I do think his physicality will be very important like you're looking at some of the sheer size of some of the Tyrone lads like Kieran McGeary and Podrick Hamsey and, you know, these kind of lads in there as well, Matty Donnelly and whatnot. Like, so to have someone like Aidan O'Shea, just to have his presence, like I think would be important. But is he going to be the man that's going to win Mayo the Old Ireland? I don't think so, personally. I think he could have a good game. But I think, you know, if, if Mayo are down three, four points going down the home stretch, like he's not the man who's going to change the game, in my opinion, anyways. I mean, he could very well go on to prove me wrong, but I suppose we'll see what happens. John, your take on that and, and what we're all probably best suits O'Shea going into what is, you know, what could really be a career defining game because he, he's had a lot of near misses. And as Aaron rightly said, his performances in all Ireland finals, you know, have lot, left a little bit to be desired. So this could really be a career defining game. Look, Sean, it's the elephant in the room at the minute. Where do you play him? Do you play him? What do you do with him? Look, I think it's I think it's a presence alone for Aidan O'Shea. I think it's nearly just the thing just to have Aidan O'Shea on the pitch, just to lead these lads. He's been there, done that, but he just hasn't got over the line for an all Ireland final. What do you do with him this Saturday? I don't really know. Is it midfield? Is it centre half, forward? It's hard to know. I 100% agree with you, Sean. You wouldn't play him full forward now, and you were saying he's just because he just did not do damage against Dublin. That was a nightmare game for him. So that just did not work for him. So I really would, if he was to start, it have to have to be midfield or centre half forward because he just was no use, unfortunately, against Dublin full forward. But look, it's the elephant in the room at the minute. It'll be very interesting to see what way James Horan addresses it. Will he start? I would just presume so. At the end of the day, he is the captain of the team. But then again, we have seen captains drop the finals. It is a regular occurrence. And um, do you bring in the form player? Do you bring in maybe Derek Cohen, maybe full forward there to, to, to replace him or Conor O'Shea's brother? There's lots of lads on the bench there too that could do a sterling job. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, look, I just think for leadership alone and presence alone, you probably do start him. But he's under huge pressure. He's, you know, as I said to you, Aaron, numerous times, the GA clock, it runs very quickly. This could be one of his last big games for Mayo. He'd want to put in a big shift. He knows fine well. He's been around the block so long at this stage. He knows fine well he didn't do well against Dublin. Saturday is a massive opportunity to right them wrong, uh, Sean. Yeah, and, and just as you mentioned that, Dan, I mean, we discussed on the podcast how impressed we've actually been with Mayo's midfield this year of Loftus and Rowan, so it doesn't automatically mean that O'Shea's going to go in and disrupt that. Then all of a sudden, if he does play at 11, does he disrupt what Mayo had and what they had so well? When Certainly when he came off, their, their forward line really clicked in. Like, is it completely out of the bloom that, you know, we could potentially see Aiden O'Shea on the bench? Would it be too off? No, I think Aiden O'Shea will definitely start. Um, and it could may kind of play a three in midfield if that makes sense. Like Dermot O'Connor spends a lot of time in, in between the 265, so effectively they have like three in there. So I can see him playing 11. I, I take the lad's point that you shouldn't play the whole game in 14, which you know for the majority of the game, as the doubles he did, like everything went wrong for him because he, he caught a ball, there was a slip. Do you remember Sean? And he had a simple kick over the bar and it went wide by that much. And then he caught the mark and then the mark went wide and then the head went gone. And it seemed every time he did a hand pass to the left, it went straight to a Dublin player. He just had an absolute mare. The hill got on his back and that was it. Mm -hmm. But if you look at those first two balls into him or two of the first three or four anyway, he'd won, he won them out in front. So I do think there's a time during the game where he will play in at 14 and whether he goes in from the start, even just as a distraction. And I agree completely with both, both the lads that... You know, Mayo can't go around around saying that they're not going to 
they're gonna, they're going to win the physical battle, unlike Kerry, and yet then don't start Aiden O'Shea because I think he's the man for the physical battle against Tyrone. And even if it's a case that he does a job on the six or does does a job someone in, in that Tyrone backline, that at least it takes it gives Mayo the other quicker players they have um, a bit more uh, space in, on the pitch, sort of thing. But like the Dublin performance was poor, and don't get me wrong, but there was something in that. I like I, I've been banging the Aiden O'Shea fourteen drum for a while. So obviously, you know, it fell apart against Dublin, but I do still think there's a place for him in a five, 10 minute spell against Toronto to, to go in there. And if it is only a distraction, so be it, because I think it might bring other Mayo players into play. But I'm fascinated how what will happen. But uh, yeah, he, 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 I think he definitely starts, John, in you. Uh, Daniel, you make a good point. Your way, Aiden, like you were saying, the heels get on his back and he gave away that pass. He kicked the two points. Or sorry, wide. Like, is that not do you know the way? Like, like that's a sign of a good player is to kind of bounce back, maybe kick a point or two. And do you know the way? Like, the hill was getting on his back. Like, my my reading on it is, if you're a top class player, or if you're the likes of Aidan O'Shea, Connor McMahon, some of these boys, like, is it not kind of imperative that Aidan O'Shea would nearly try to ignore that noise and actually push on and deliver a good mm. performance? Or you know, it's a funny kind of mindset, Dan. Well, you you weren't there beside Sean Hussey and some of the stuff he was showing at Aidan O'Shea. <laughs> No, no, but the one thing I was going to say is that, that you mentioned the character. If I'm not mistaken, in, in one of the All Ireland finals in 2019, David Clifford kicked, I think it was four wides in the first 15 minutes and then mm. kind of really stepped into gear. And that was his first All Ireland senior final. See, that's um, what I'm saying. That's, mm, yeah. Mm. But just on like, and everyone throws the, uh, he hasn't scored an All Ireland final. Like, when was it ever Aidan O'Shea's job to score for Mayo? Like, I, I understand sure. against Sligo, everyone remembers the hat-trick against Sligo, but apart from those, uh, in big, big games, his job is to carry, commit, man, and he set up Lee Keegan's goal and he did a 16 or 17 final um, and assisted the he, goal. He could he do that this, this Saturday. He could do that this Saturday. Exactly. So and yeah. I, I, it's not his game to score. And the fact, he, those both, two of the chances he missed were literally that much. And I, and I do think there is a space for him to go on 14. I accept that, yeah. It, it, it went from bad to worse straight away from but I was still shocked he was taken off to be honest with you I thought it was a white raise the white flag moment from James Warren let's just try something different but full credit to him he saw that Aiden O'Shea just wasn't having a good game and uh, made the right call in fairness to Mayo they kicked on from there big time I I think one of the, the big things that have kind of changed I'm not going to say Gaelic football entirely but one of the big things in these Dublin Mayo games in recent years has been the matchups and everywhere you went in a pub before the game was the matchup who's marking Alan Brogan who's marking Aidan O'Shea who's marking Bernard Brogan these were the kind of things and a lot of the comments are quite similar here tonight so we've got um, from the sideline podcast who do you see Conor Myler on we've got Beggs 85 here saying Keegan who does he pick up will he man mark will someone man mark Lee Keegan so I'm going to go to you Aaron um and I like probably talk about some of the key battles, but like, are we going to see something completely out of the ordinary here, or are we going to kind of see what Mayo did with their their sort of man marking and how well it worked for, for them as well as, as yeah, no, absolutely. Like I think, like I think in particular, Padraig O'Hara. I think he's. Um, I think for me, like he's probably one of the most important players Mayo have probably brought through this year. In all honesty, like I was even saying it before the the Dublin game, like he's such a, a like a big physical player. And I understand Lushy Mullen, and he's he's a terrific player, no doubt about it. But I don't really think you're seeing the best out of him at a fullback. Like I think he's the best when he when he's playing at a wingback. So I think someone like Padraig O'Hara maybe going up against Conor McKenna if he's playing a, a fourteen or. Obviously, Daniel was saying there about Cahill McShane starting, and I suppose we'll have to see what happens there. Like, but yeah, and, and Connor Moyler in particular as well. Like, obviously, who's who's he going to pick up against? Like, you've got Ryan O'Donoghue, who's such a explosive player. Like, he's so good at running past one or one or two players, like creating those extra pockets of space. And I suppose Tommy Conroy as well. Like, you can't forget him. Like, he's a he's been a really good addition for Mayo over the past couple of years. And you know, could you see Podrick Hamsey maybe going on him as well? Like, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of questions as well. And and like what one of the commenters were saying there about Lee Keegan, like, you know, maybe he goes on, on Darren McCurry, like that'll definitely be a, a battle I'd love to see anyways. And I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be very intriguing. Like, mm, And maybe something to note as well is that Tyrone full back line all scored points within the first 30, 34 minutes and what wasn't really a relatively high scoring game. So, 
going to you, John, I mean, on that, we all know Lee Keegan scoring threat. Maybe we don't see it as much these days, although there was a couple of blistering counter-attacks that he was involved in. He had the likes of Tommy Conroy, who came big in the second half and in extra time for Mayo. So, I mean, there really is looking like, and uh, having read articles on it, everyone's trying to predict the matchups. I think people who know them uh, with the two managers from Tyrone and and uh, and James Horan. But like, is there anything there that you see that really are, you can not get behind, but understand and maybe predict coming along uh, in the matchups? Yeah, look from the matchup point of view, it's like I've both programs in front of me, so I'm kind of dipping in and out of them. But look, like apparently the word in the street is Conor Myers going to pick up Brian O'Donoghue, so Aaron, I think you've got that one spot on. Um, and that's that sacrifice in our uh, Conor Myers game because obviously Conor Myler, he's a good man to have up forward, um, you know, producing ball into the likes of McCurry and McKen and uh, McKen and Donnelly. So he's sacrificing his game; he has to come back. So that maybe leaves another Mayo man to go up front. So you know, from that point of view, that would be very interesting. And um, I don't know, like who else you have there? Obviously, Roland Mack to me, it, it just depends. Like, I just think it'd be very silly by Mayo to leave Aidan O'Shea in full forward again because I think Mack to me would have all the joy in the world against him. So, I think that'd be fairly ridiculous. Mack to me has been known to mark the best man on the opposition team. He done a very, as I was saying to you, Daniel, a few days ago, he done a brilliant, brilliant job against Clifford in the semi final. That'll be very interesting. Poor Campsey. You're probably looking at Tommy Conroy there, I'd say, Michael McCarron, and probably on the likes of maybe, who would you be thinking? Maybe maybe Ryan O'Donoghue might be picked up by him either. So it's 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 hard to know. It's so hard to know. Like It's easy for us to be saying on a Thursday night leading up to the final. Matchups, everything could change. We could have, see a completely different full forward line for Mayo. So it would be so, so interesting. And as well, Sean, as you were rightly saying, it's up to the managers to decide, really, isn't it? Dan, you're you're on. I know we've had a lot of discussion in the past about potential matchups. Uh, I know we did it last year on the podcast, and even going into games. I mean, look at the players on either side, and there really is a little bit of jostling of who's going to mark who. Because even just looking at the Mayo list here, you have someone like Paddy Durkin, who probably didn't have his most notable game in the semi final, but we all know his scoring pedigree as well. So I mean, both sides have got that ability to get points from from their defense their defensive players as well yeah very interested there that um that Con- Connor Myler is potentially going to pick up um Ryan I don't know I don't know if I'd do that but then I'm trying to come up with an alternative there and I'm like oh see I- I'd actually love to sit on it on the actual management zoom call or meeting does it last like five minutes do they know or is it are they up there all night or do they change it like 31 minutes before throwing like um because I know I do <laughs> I think oh, it, must be, it must be before throwing. Like, yeah. They must, must have a quick look around. And I'll, I tell you what, I fancy that one today. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the Dublin Mail got easy to pick before the end because you'd Keegan on a Dermot Connolly. It was actually interesting on a, on a side note hearing Paul Flynn say that uh, he, for the Dublin management, wanted him to pick up Keegan. So he ran over to Lee Keegan side, and Lee Keegan just kept following Connolly around. And Paul mm-hmm. Flynn was running after Keegan, running after Connolly for about five minutes in an All Ireland <laughs> final. Like this is the sort of messing that happens. Like, and this is like Dublin. Jim Gavin's Dublin. Like, do you know what I mean? So you can imagine like some of that's happened on Saturday. Like, yeah, it'll be fascinating the matchups. Um, something I spoke about with uh, John earlier the week. We were saying John about Lee yeah, Keegan, yeah. and we were saying that you know it's not just the legs thing that he's not playing wing back i think james horn always felt he needed someone like him back there and particularly in oshie mullen's absence now the fact that oshie mullen could come in mm. i don't know whether maybe that might push lee keegan forward a small bit or would it maybe allow oshie mullen play there and they can do a lot of switching there between the two because mm. we all know lee keegan's the way he came into that game against dublin and everyone's saying why didn't he start like that but i i personally thought it might be a small bit of legs but, but i think J- there's also the, the point that james horn since 2019 since he's come in for a second spell has seen a need to have lee keegan there and we all remember the day that he got roasted against conal Callan in that semi-final you the, the famous goal that uh, ended the ended the male show in that game but do you push him a little bit forward uh against this tyrone team maybe you can afford to but again tyrone could go up and play the three men for four line which they're well capable of doing if the likes mcshane start or even if they go with a similar enough team because against Kerry at times they did have like you know they Dar Curry up there Manny Donnelly and then you know the likes of Conor McKenna up there as well that's sometimes playing almost like a three so Conor McKenna was like the one closest to the half forward line so if they do that then maybe there's a need to maybe have Lee Keegan on the edge of the D sort of thing but I'll be fascinated on his role and given obviously he's always been the man with matchups in Dear McConley it'd be mm. very interesting to see who he picks up but um yeah it, again it's hard to say but I love having a go with them and getting them completely wrong nearly all the time because if you get one wrong you're in massive trouble for the rest of your matchups if that makes sense 
Yeah, and you yeah. wouldn't really believe too much like the the lineups that are announced. Maybe you know mm. two or three days before, like you know, there's going to be a lot of changes in there, and you know positions are going to be changed. And that's the fascinating thing about throwing, like what you said about Connor Moyler. Like he's a player who can play up further up the pitch. You've got mm. Noel Sludden who can you know drop back in around the half back line. Kieran McGeary as well. So like there could be a lot of chopping and changing and players named in certain positions and all of a sudden then you know you've got a, a 28 coming out and, and lining up at the at the start of the game so it'd be uh be very fascinating Toronto forwards that can like play at the back as well like Connor Myler and Niall Sludden can handily play around the back line as well apparently there was word in the street of uh, I think it was a Darren McCurran being picked up by Lee Keegan but I nearly feel for a final I think Lee Keegan should actually not need to be focused on that I, I like I get Keegan up the pitch as much as possible I really do because like we've seen him in finals before, we've seen him in semi finals. He offers so much to me going forward. He really does. Like you, you, one one point, because you always wonder who who decides who picks up who. Is it the Mayo player or the Tyrone player? So like if a bit of madness, like if, if I was doing an All Ireland final like a free hit, I might try something like Trolley Keegan on Connor Myler and just follow him around for five minutes. Connor would be like, no, I'm picking up. What are you doing here? Do you know what I mean? That bit of mess and sort of thing. So sh- uh, sh- I, yeah, hmm. go on. <laughs> <laughs> should Tarot can decide when they want to play games, Daniel? So to be able to decide the matchups. Yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely deciding the matchups. I, I actually see John a, a comment there saying we're not talking. Glad there's not much talk of Peter, Peter Hart. He's the massive link man. True, uh, he's true, my guy true, for the yeah. semi-final to score a goal, yeah. but unfortunately. Uh, yeah, so that, that, that's yeah it's a fair point as well because he was yeah. actually one of the match when when uh may on Tron played last in the league so he's underrated. Could be, yeah, he, yeah like he, he's he could be a huge player like no doubt about it yeah well, uh, before we get into our prediction i was going to do a couple of quick little quick fire yokes and one of the the ones i was going to have and touch on peter hart is who's probably more underrated and who would you rather have on your side one from each team and that's peter hart or dermot o'connor and the reason i say that is because they both had pivotal moments in that game peter hart's block down was an unbelievable iconic moment up there with connor gormley's and then dermot o'connor's down i know you were raving about it his is lifting his left leg to keep the ball in and may again. Of those two players that maybe don't get talked about enough from maybe when we're doing matchups, you kind of maybe forget Dermot O'Connor because he's a 7 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10 most weeks, same with Peter Hart. Which one of those players would you take? Uh, I'll go with you, John. Oh, million dollar question there, Sean. Jesus Christ. <laughs> great question. Yeah, great question. Um, look, you're probably looking at the pair of boys there. They offer so much. I think, obviously, Peter Hart, Peter Hart he can he can do it both ways. He can defend. He can attack. He can attack. I think Jeremy O'Connor going forward is absolutely brilliant. But look, I'm an Ulster man. I'd probably go. I'd probably have to go with Peter Hart. Um, I've just seen so much more of him. I think he offers so much to the own cause. He's been around the block so long at this stage. If there's never like I know both players deserve an All Ireland, but Peter Hart, if there was ever a player, he's been a great servant to Tyrone. And he just you know that block in the semi final was outrageous. Probably not good as Mr. Garvey's, but that's probably for another uh, another day's debate. But no, look at it. I think Peter Hart um, probably all day for me because I know Jeremy Connor, like uh, how he kept the ball in against mm-hmm. Dublin semi final, it was absolutely tremendous. But I just think Peter Hart for what he's given to Tyrone over the years, Sean, he'd get my vote. Hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'd actually have to agree as well. Like, I think with, with Peter Hart, I mean, he just he, he offers so much like in defense and uh, and attack as well. Like, and I think like in, in many ways, like he's that he's the engine in many ways with, with Tyrone. Like, you don't really see too much what he does off the ball. He's kind of chipping away with the odd point here or there. He's getting good tackles in, he's getting good blocks in, and you know, definitely a, a contender as well to potentially get a, an all star. Like, when it's when it's all said and done, and like with Jeremy O'Connor, in fairness, like I suppose he's kind of a different player in many ways to Peter Hart. Like, I suppose Jeremy O'Connor is more around the, the half forward line or, or midfield, but like when he gets going as well, like he, he has the potential to, to really make a big impact for, for that Mayo side. But I'd have to go with, with Peter Hart. Before you then make sure if you watch on the live stream to get comments in or follow us on all our social media account before we go, we're going to get some some predictions from the people watching. Similar with you, Dan, and, and, and Peter Hart and Jamie O'Connor. And like it is hard to separate those two players, but those, those were two iconic moments that really lifted both their sides in the mm. in their games yeah and it's important to talk about because yeah you would listen to a lot of or you you might chat for four hours and just not mention the two lads just because you're doing the matchups and you're kind of forgetting about them i would say with dear mcconnor very impressed because he he kind of like plays that like third midfielder role so well that he and it's not an easy thing to do where he's, he's essentially playing midfield but he's covering the wing forward and he's coming up with the scores um but peter Hart for me definitely just because 
of what he's done in the game and he's just consistent performances and while Darren O'Connor might reach those heights eventually I, th- I do think uh, Peter Hart for the full house mm, a good job because I'm a massive Peter Hart fan so I was making sure right, I was just double check with you uh, uh, we're going to go towards you to get your, your comments in or any any questions but what I want from, from the three of you is a prediction but also your prediction for, for man of the match um, and we might we might have a bit of fun with this uh, over the over the weekend. Uh, I, I won't ask for the score, but I'll just ask for your prediction and your and your man of the match. And I'll go with our two guests first. I'll start with you, Aaron from GA Fan TV. Yeah, I'm going with a, a Toronto victory. I think I do think it will be a very cagey game. I think it'll be a very nervy game. I think with the fact that there's so much on the line, I think it's been very well documented in many ways. This is probably bigger than an All Ireland final. Like you're talking about one county trying to end the. A 70 year wait and another county trying to end a 13 year wait and obviously it's their first year under new management so it's such a, a huge game for them if i was to go with a man of the match i, I think Connor mckenna i think you know if toronto are going to win this game i think it's probably going to be from breaking with pace on the counter attack they'll probably play in a similar way to, to the way they played against kerry i do think that at the same time i don't think mayo will, be, will you know push cornerbacks forward or get wingbacks too far forward like that's why i do think it will be a very nervy like cagey game and i think Connor mckenna on the break could easily pop up with one or two goals and i could have a huge impact on the game so i go with Connor mckenna man of the match and, and toronto win it by two go with you john same question Ooh, it's just the million dollar question really these days lads it's a very very tight game to call look you know both teams have been there always the bride's been never the bride unfortunately for both teams especially for Mayo but look if you if you are to weigh things up as Aaron was rightly saying Tyrone's first final or first um, potential uh, champ, championship final win in 13 years Mayo haven't done it in God knows how long at this stage. So it's a re- it's going to go down to the edge, really. It's going to be a very nervy game, I feel. But I just have a real feeling about Tyrone this year. Um, they were so impressive in the semi-final, so impressive throughout Ulster. They had very notable victories against the likes of Donegal, Kerry, yourselves, great wins. I think they've had a really, really good season. I just think Mayo, the game against Dublin, it was a mental block for them. They've done really well to bet them. But I just think when Tyrone are in a game like this, when the odds are against them, the look their odds against them and Kerry, no one gave them an absolute sporting chance. Look what they've done. So I just feel it'll go to extra time and Tyrone probably to win by a point or two. And uh, my man of the match would be I would just a big thing for Darren McCurry this year. So I'll I'll, I'll uh, point my finger towards Darren McCurry for man of the match and Tyrone to win by a point or two after extra time. Super. Before I go to you, Dan, we got a comment in here saying Mayo by four to six points. And um, thankfully, someone's gone. Tyrone can't get any black cards, and ref has a big role. So we've gone forty-eight minutes, forty-seven yeah. minutes, really, without having to mention Joe McQuillan, which Joe. could could actually Don't be Joe. One of, Joe. Yeah, could actually be one of the decisions. He's from Captain lads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you as well for your prediction and your man of the match. Are you gonna go with the? The romantic story of Mayo, no. and put it put it this way: if if Tyrone do win, the most nervous man in Ireland would be uh, Brian Cody because everyone would be looking at well, Mickey Hart left, and they won the All Ireland <laughs> straight away. So, be a few people in Kilkenny with with a similar story. Brian Cody's more Fergie. I think Mickey Hart was Arsene Wenger. The parallels, you know, the three Premier Leagues, the three All Ireland uh, finals. Mm. But again, that's for another day. I'm a bit torn because I have I think I have a really good pick for man of the match, but. At the same time, I, don't, I, I think the other team might end up doing it. So I'm kind of torn in that sense. But I'll, I'll get to it in a sec. I, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a draw after 70 minutes. I, I really do. Because I just think with a couple of minutes to go, these teams, and something I, I, I didn't get to touch on, like these te- both these counties, I accept they'll get better and better over the next two or three years. But Dublin will be back. Kerry will be back. Donegal, Galway, Monaghan. Um, I'm probably forgetting a few. That They'll all be looking at the, these two teams going, we can, we can win in All-Ireland. So the fact that They've got a coin flip here to win one. It's just such a massive, massive opportunity. And I think with two or three minutes to go, you're you're on a draw and I'm fine. You're not giving the ball away, uh, and that plays a lot into it. Joe McQuillan loves playing for a draw as well, so I'd be, I'd be really, I'd probably have like a few bob in the draw and enjoy the game. In extra time, I can see Tyrone with that with the bench, maybe just getting out on top. But in terms of a player who I'm really excited to watch on Saturday, it's uh, Matty Ruan, who who I think has done a phenomenal job on the games against Brian Fenton and. It was picked up uh, last year's All Ireland final. I haven't heard much about it f- from this year because I think I thought throughout, like I know Fenton didn't have a great game, but like Ruan was on him for a majority of the All Ireland semi-finals. So 
I think he'll have a great game because I think he'll dominate the Niall Morgan's kick out. It's not too dissimilar to what Kerry did, but I do think that Rob Henley will go long a bit more with the kick outs, in which case then that, uh, that he'll be going to Matty Ruan, I think. So I think he could have a big, big impact on the game. So he's my pick for man of the match. But if I had to pick a team, it's Tyrone after extra time by one. Yeah, it's actually a really good point as well about Matty Rowan in the midfield because, like, you're thinking Con Kilpatrick in there and, and probably Brian Kennedy, Connor Loftus in there for Mayo. Like, that's probably going to be a big strength for for Mayo because I do actually think they'll they'll win the mid the the midfield battle. So, um, Matty Rowan's definitely a good show, especially if Mayo do go on to win it as well. Yeah, like, and I think like it finds as well, and we've seen Dublin in recent years. I think the bench for either team is going to be absolutely huge. And to roll with the stronger bench, lads, like if you could bring on the likes of Colin McShane and uh, who else do we have there? Uh, Hugh Pat McGeary, Frank Burns, Mark Bradley, lads, Derek Canavan, any of them boys could win a final for you. So I think mm. Tyrone's, I think Tyrone's bench could actually win it for them. I really do. And, and just on that, yeah, so it's penalty shootouts for the All Ireland semi finals, but for provincial finals and All Ireland finals at the moment, it's extra time, but then it will be a replay. So Tyrone, uh, if, if they delay the All-Iron final another two weeks by scoring a last game <laughs> goal by Colin McShane, you can imagine some of the headlines altogether. But again, you, you never know. And it's definitely a possibility. Though. Uh, mm. Peter Canavan's son, Derek Canavan, the son of God. Who knows? Michael yeah, Trump's. Seeing great photo yeah. of him posing with uh, Canavan. It must have been 03, but it might have been even later than that. 08, uh, or 05, sorry. Uh, it's great photos. Yeah, it'd be amazing if he did it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you might as well just leave Sam McGuire and Dublin then. <laughs> There's replays all the time. Might as well just leave it here. <laughs> that's what they. That's what they say. The son of God coming to resurrect and Croker on Saturday. Um, no, what's your that's, prediction, Sean? Uh, well, my prediction is. Uh, it's honest, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think. I think. I do think Tyrone will win. Um, I just there's something about Tyrone this year, and and my man of the match is predictions gonna be Peter Hart. I just think he's gonna have an immense game. I just think often players like that just slip under the radar and i've always felt with peter hart is he's a massive big game player he he's had a lot of big moments for tyrone over the years and i just think it it, it might go um so so there is a lot of a lot of talk about that but but anyway that's uh that's all we've got time with there's, there's a lot of great comments coming in um we've got mayo someone reckons Mayo will get get two or three goals tommy conroy to get at least one Someone saying Liam here can't believe three year picking Tyrone Mayo will burn them in the last quarter. McShane looked great against the Kerry defence who were out on their feet. So there is a lot to come and Brian Dowling up Tyrone. So there there is it's either going to to the red and green of Mayo or the red or white of Tyrone. So it's going to be an interesting final either way. Mm. I'm sure we'll we'll be reviewing it in a couple of days' time. Yeah. But and Sean, just on the extra time, I am writing that John and Aaron that it's uh it, it, it will go to extra time. Won't well, it? I'm read. Uh, I'm. I think I've the read an article here. Up, but, yeah, I'm, I'm fairly I've certain. Read an, it. I've read an article here that says there's going to be no extra time in the All Ireland final clash. So, I mean, oh, yes. it's, cl- it's classic GA that you, you're never you're never left too sure what what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm sure, as as John's alluding to there, there could be money involved um, somewhere <laughs> or another. So I think because yeah. I'm 100 percent that if there's extra time before, so they must have changed the regulations, or or so, that's not the case. So, so John separate. McQuillan, John McQuillan is going to be uh, looking for the draw. Is that what you're saying, Dan? The two million pound man, if he makes a draw, that's all I'm saying. Daniel, the GA have no money; they're broke. They're yeah, just they're absolutely broke. They're, 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 out, they're out their feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a hundred percent draw, isn't it? They, they might get more attendance. It, it does look like it could be a draw. But oh, nice. uh, put the house in the draw. <laughs> yeah, we we might we might be here in a couple of weeks. Time the same the same for discussing in, in our prediction that we did not predict a draw. But anyway, that's that's all from us. If if you're new to the show, please subscribe. Get us at all your podcast platforms. Make sure to follow us on all your social medias. Thanks mm-hmm. so much to everyone for commenting tonight. Um, it really added to, to the stream and we're really looking forward to watching the game on Saturday afternoon. Someone says get Garrett Brooks back. I'm sure I'm sure there's someone working in the GA trying to <laughs> trying to get that in. But my well, thanks another, to John. Another from final the... in Limerick, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my, my thanks to John from J Mac Podcast. John, thanks for joining us. No worries, sir. Pleasure. And also, and also Aaron from the G, from GA Fan TV. Yeah, cheers very much, lads. Thanks very much for uh, for having me on. So make sure to check them guys out. It'll be all in our podcast description. And of course, Daniel, thanks as always. No worries. So that's all from the Tackle Sport Podcast. Make sure to check us out, like I said, on all our social media platforms. 
and whether you're a Mayo fan or Tyrone fan or just a football fan, make sure you enjoy the match and may the best side win.